Parker Creator here and happy Blessed Wednesday! So today is a brand new day and I'm excited because it's just right after Thanksgiving and it's us to just be so thankful for each day that we're blessed with, right? And essentially, Thanksgiving is not supposed to be some commercialized like day to just buy turkey for one day and gather with family in that one day. No! I believe it's supposed to be every day. Like, you're supposed to be thankful to God for this wonderful, wonderful brand new day to take on any new challenges and thankful for us, like, having another day to live, right? And that's something that we just take for granted, right? So, with that in mind, I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving time with your family and, for, well, for those in Canada, because I know the Thanksgiving one for U.S. is not until the next one. So, with that in mind, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is right here, and ring the notification bell. And like and subscribe greatly means so much to me, so much, because it's all for Christ. I truly just keep on trying to put as much wonderful content for you, wonderful people, so that really we all can just inspire each other one way or another, especially in this time of the pandemic. We have to keep on inspiring each other so that you will keep on becoming closer to Christ and not becoming lukewarm especially during this time because it's very easy when you turn on the tv all you see are just like numbers and whatnot well number of cases obviously and other things which i'm not cp24 so i'm not gonna say what's going on so you get what i mean right so it's very easy for all of us to succumb to that sense of fear and that discouragement and that despair because all of us are just like wondering like, when will this be over? I mean, yes, it is a question, but it's not for us to truly dwell upon every single day and then for us to just, like, sit around and just, like, wait, when is this going to be over? Like, no, it's for us to take this oppor this time of difficulty and turning it into a time of opportunity. For grace, right? So think about that. Turn this time of difficulty into a time of opportunity so that, you really have that clarity and you will grow in virtue and you will grow closer to Christ and you'll grow closer to God and you'll grow closer, grow closer, English today, <laughs> closer to our blessed mother Mary so that this time will not be wasted. And this time will truly be a time of growth and development deeply in your heart so that when this is all over, You'll be ready to be out there for Christ and you'll be ready to truly not be afraid of times of persecution, right? Because really when times of persecution come upon us, which is already is, we have to be ready. We have to not be afraid to, to just not allow our sense of pride to take over, but rather place that light of Christ out there first and foremost, and that is the top priority. Right. So, with that said, and as I was gonna say before all my videos, let's get started. I want to talk to you guys about the power pair in perfecting our thinking and doing for Christ. And I felt that today was a perfect day to be able to talk about that for you wonderful people. It's because really all of us are definitely persevering. Okay, that was probably my parents in the kitchen. Anyways, so. There's no ghosts in this place, thank God. Anyway, he's <laughs> back to what I was saying. So, all of us are really focused on fervently praying for what we're praying for right now, especially for this pandemic to be over, and for our loved ones, and for our family, and for those that are looking for jobs, and for the frontline workers, and our leaders in the church. You know, all of us are persevering prayer right now, right? So, we have to be able to know how to perfect that, and so, you know, and realize how powerful prayer is so that it will really allow ourselves to perfect our thinking and our doing our actions, basically, right? So, because really, bottom line is, prayer is the Christian's fundamental means of acquiring virtue. Meaning that the more you pray, the more you will grow in virtue, the more you will have more trust in God, the more you allow yourself to have that sense of inner peace, that everything will be okay, right? It's not just that artificial hope that everyone just think, oh, everything will be okay. It's just that hope. But when you place all of your hope in God's hands, 
that makes a difference. You know, when you just like say, oh yeah, I hope everything's going to be okay. No, I hope everything in God's hands will be okay. And we're guaranteed that. You know, we may be enjoying this time of storm right now, obviously, but it's for us to take this as an opportunity to realize how much we need to trust in God's timing even more and not relying on ourselves and not relying on our own time table, you know, because really it's God's magnificent plan, right? It's God's magnificent and perfect timing and not our timing. Right? Like it could be tomorrow for whatever we're praying for. It could be tomorrow or the next day or whatnot. But we always have to be ready. You know, we always have to be ready. Therefore, you know, allowing ourselves to know the power of prayer will make us realize that we will grow in virtue over time. And definitely, I can attest to that. Like from the beginning of this pandemic, it was not easy, you know, taking it all in and adjusting and adapting to this new lifestyle but you know little did i know it was going to grow into this <laughs> this youtube channel <laughs> so that's what i'm saying we have to always remember and keep in our minds and our hearts not our face our minds and our heart and our soul that during times of difficulty arises times of opportunity okay i don't know what my parents is up to with the noise but anyways it's okay. It is what it is, right? So going back, you know, so with St. Thomas Aquinas, he has two ways, two ways, two, two ways to reach the truth, right, with prayer. So one is receiving truth from outside ourselves and accessing such truths directly from God, i.e. prayer. Prayer, right? Because the more you pray with full purity and with full intentions for God and that full submissive submission to Christ, right, and God's ultimate wonderful plan, you allow yourself to know and allow God to reveal more of the truth to you over time. A lot of us don't realize that. Like when you really feel that sense of peace in your heart that when you finally give in to what God is calling you to, and what God is leading you to, the more you feel that sense of peace in your heart that it's aligned with what God wants and it's aligned with what God is calling you to do. Even though may, at first it may seem such a struggle because it's just like, Ugh, no, why? But then when you finally just give in, you will really feel that it's what God wants. And from that point on, you will see the clarity over time according to God's time through variety of answers here and there through people or through signs different ways God has his wonderful mysterious ways and you just have to realize that in our heart don't forget that to back that up with scripture in wisdom chapter 7 verse 7 I called upon the Lord and the spirit of wisdom came upon me that's basically talking about prayer you know, when it comes to prayer, I firmly believe at that just, it doesn't have to be lofty prayers. Like, yes, it's great to do novenas, it's great to do chaplets, it's great to do the rosary, awesome sauce. But also as well too, we have to take it upon ourselves realizing that when it comes to prayer as well, like, as long as it comes from here, it doesn't have to be in such a formal, formal aspect. That's why I highly recommend just write letters to Apostle Holy Mary, write letters to Jesus Christ, write letters to God, just dear God, I'm struggling with this, or dear God, thank you so much. Well, start with thank being grateful. And then after that, humbly request for any prayer intentions that you're fervently praying for. And then after that, just apologize, say I'm sorry, I failed you in these areas, and I trust and i need your grace to not do them again and to be able to grow from learning those lessons right i feel it's in the structure like that too is also best to have it as well so at least it's allowing yourself to develop within your heart and you developing within yourself in virtue right so I would recommend that. Just to write, like, Dear God or Dear Jesus Christ, Dear Blessed Mary. Start off your day in your morning with that. And really, it's the best way to start. 
your morning and your day. So that at least like you're putting God first, you're putting your Blessed Mother Mary first, you're putting Jesus Christ first, and then you'll notice that your whole day will be so at peace and so okay. <laughs> It'll be so like not so rattled up with other things because you put the top priority first. Top priority, right? So that's why as well too, go to the Living with Christ app. Read the scriptures from there for the day, like the first reading, the gospel, right? And the psalm and allow God to speak to you from there and see how God was really like talking to you, right? You know, there's actually like someone that's actually, that I know that's really putting the wonderful saint quote in the Living with Christ app, which is really cute because like every time I open the Living Christ app, there's always like a quote written by a saint there. And it's so cute how that person's really like cropping it and then posting it on their Facebook. So I'm just like, yeah, Bob, <laughs> because really a lot of the quotes are just like, whoo, mic drops. Like it's just, it just sums up whatever it is like they're talking about it's just it's so on point and so really that's just one of the ways to be able to inspire others to just follow the way that the saints lived right so the saints themselves they are a fine example to becoming closer to christ and so it's our duty it's our duty and it's our mission to constantly inspire others to become closer to christ whether you know putting saints quotes on their profile Facebook or also inviting other people to prayer groups so that you know your prayer group will be more firmly united as one in other ways there's so many ways and it's way better than just moping around and thinking about when is this pandemic gonna be over I mean yeah it is what it is right but right now for this pandemic not to be over it means it's not God's timing yet you know we all still need to be purified we all still need to be pruned one way or another right so going back to saint thomas Aquinas, so the second way as well to really deepen our power of prayer is personal study and meditation personal study and meditation because we need to do our own reading as well and our own growth in our knowledge we can't just like rely on just like okay god drop the mic and the knowledge for me to know no 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 we have to do our part as well too you know always do your best like god handle the rest right we have to do our part we have to be able to do our readings read spiritual books here and there so that it will expand your knowledge and it will allow you to share that knowledge to other people and then inspire those people to inspire more other people right it's basically that way of just teaching one person to teach another another person and so on and so forth and that's part of our mission and our calling on this earth right so saying we cannot treat god as a genie in the bottle where we just like i wish this were to happen no 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 that's not how we should be treating god as we should be allowing ourselves to deepen our faith go deeper with christ go deeper with god and for us to grow in virtue and fervently praying for what we're praying for, right? Like, if you're fervently praying for something or someone or your vocation or your job or family, give it to God. Just be like, hey, I really, truly, desirely want this, you know, and I place it all into your hands according to your time. I know it sounds simple, but over the course of time, God will really show you signs and God will really lead the way for you one way or another. And it's just very, it's very important that we allow ourselves to just see that and not be blinded by all the chaos of this world, right? So allow ourselves to just surrender it all into Christ's hands, surrender it all into God's hands. And you allow yourself to grow in virtue and you allow yourself to grow closer to Christ, closer to God, and you will deepen that relationship. Because really, you don't want to just be that, you know, that Catholic going to church every Sunday and that's it. You were called for greatness. Each and every one of us are called for greatness. We weren't called for mediocrity. We were called for greatness and holiness. And all of us are called to be saints, right? 
So allow yourself to just focus on that goal and then God will really show you the way, the truth, and the life. Like Jesus Christ said it himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life, not me. Jesus Christ said that. And it's in the scripture. So stop focusing on what the media is saying all the time. You know, that's not the truth, the way, and the life, okay? No. Don't allow yourself to follow the, the myths of this secular world, but allow yourself to be different from the world. Don't fall into what the world expects of you. Follow what Christ expects of you. Follow what God expects of you. And follow what our Blessed Mother Mary expects of you. Because really, we have to remember that it's all about pleasing God, not about pleasing the world. Like, yes, we will face persecution, and it will definitely affect our pride, and it will definitely affect our sense of security and make us feel insecure sometimes, but that's the enemy knocking on the door. So don't be afraid. Only allow yourself to just remember that everything is in God's hands and everything is in God's timing. So there's no need to be fearful. There's no need to be fearful. Yes, there's a pandemic lurking, okay? But don't allow it to take you away from living your life to the fullest. Because remember, during times of difficulty arises times of opportunity. I always like to remember that. And from that point on, it's not taking me back from becoming fearful but rather it's making me more bolder than ever to just live my life prudently and constantly striving to see what god has in store and we just have to remember that just prayer is all where it starts prayer begins with essentially just raising our hearts and our minds to god our father that's the first thing the second thing is Include those supplications, those humble requests. That's why I changed my, the format of my prayers now. I just I humbly ask your name, Most Holy Mary, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and God our Father, and then my intentions. Right? Include your supplications. And three, thanksgiving for blessings that God has provided. Always remember that. You know, we have to be thankful for what God has given us. Because really, we'll realize what God has given us once he takes it away from us, right? You don't want to wait for that day to happen. So constantly be grateful and thankful to God for everything that he's given you. Those three things. That's what prayer is. That's what prayer essentially starts with. Don't forget. Really to close off, prayer is very important. The power of prayer really morphs our minds into perfecting our thinking and our actions and our doing basically and we have to take it seriously because prayer is the form of our communication to god right like god's not like a a hotline we're just like okay dial this number and god okay what's up what's happening what's the status of that no we're not no that's not how we should be treating god no we have to allow ourselves to allow that power of prayer to deepen our own faith and for us to grow in our virtue and for us to deepen our relationship with God. And then for us to exercise that virtue of humility throughout that course of time when you're constantly praying for something, so fervently especially, right? And, you know, it's not easy because really... We live in a world that's very fast paced. We live in a world that's, we, all the answers are quick, quick, quick. Like Google, right? You type it in, you get your answer in like a split second or like a split fraction of a second, right? And no, that's not how it is with God. My God, he has this wonderful, perfect timing. And then once it just plops into your life and God places and reveals the wonderful answer in your life according to his time, you will really be like, oh my gosh, why did I complain so much? I can definitely attest to that. <laughs> A lot of the times I've really just cringed into like the timing in my life. 
with certain things. And once it's been placed in my life, it just makes you realize, like, wow. <laughs> so, really, like, focus on that. Focus on knowing that it's God's perfect timing and humbly request for your intentions that you truly want. Say, I humbly ask in your name and then you will send Jesus Christ and God our Father. Elizabeth Mother Mary is the one I always love to start off with. And then her son Jesus Christ and God our Father. And then whatever you're asking for. Because when you add that in the structure of your prayer, you allow yourself to grow in virtue of humility in that process, right? So during this pandemic, we're all in this together. So don't just stop complaining if you're complaining about this pandemic. Like, yes, it is what it is. And yes, it's preventing a lot of us not to do things that we want to do. You know, that human interaction. Hugging! I just miss hugging so much. Like those, those firm and tight ones. You just don't want to let go when you're saying goodbye. No, those or hellos or just oh, those beautiful, simplistic moments of just a hug. That I miss, but now we can't do that right now. So, you know, now that it's been taken away from us, just realize that when it, when we're able to do that again with one another. Be grateful. <laughs> it's simple thing like simple things like that alone itself, that human interaction that we all took for granted. Right? All of us were just focused on our phones. Whenever you're in a meeting, you take your phone out. <laughs> right? So don't allow this time of pandemic to allow you to succumb to that sense of fear. Forget it. It's it's Pointless, it's draining, it will drain out your brain. Really, but just focus on this time of difficulty is a time of opportunity. Just remember that. And then take it from there and see how God leads you. So there you have it. I hope you you and your family be well all the time and always and you'll always be my prayers and my prayer intentions, even though I don't know who's watching this, but Really, we're all in this together. Stay strong, stay fervent, and with that said, and as I was to say at the end of all my videos, don't be afraid to be true warriors of Christ.